Hey, in this video I'm going to talk about some of the changes in the Vortex modding setup since the last Valheim update, and follow that with a brief introduction to Jotun the Valheim lib, or JVL. Honestly, the documentation and example mod are excellent, and I'll link them in the description. This will be more of just a simple overview of one approach to getting started with it, or at least how I set up my environment. I know there are a few mod managers being used at this point, but I'm most comfortable with Vortex and find it pretty easy to use. That's what I'm going to be sticking with for now. To start, I have a fresh install of Valheim and I'm going to add it to be managed by Vortex. You'll see after doing that, Vortex now adds the BEP and X pack mod instead of the unstripped DLLs mod. Uh, as far as I could tell, the mod wasn't being well maintained, so they've swapped over. The setup is almost exactly the same after this, except you will no longer have an unstripped managed folder, and instead will now have an unstripped corelib folder to contain the unstripped DLLs. If we go to the game install, we can see that new folder right here. In addition to getting BEP and X pack, you'll also want to install the Jotun mod from Nexus Mods if you want to test your mods which you can get from here, and I'll put this link in the description as well. After getting Vortex set up in the new configuration, the easiest way to get going with JVL is to follow their step-by-step -step developer guide. First, if you do not have Visual Studio, you need to grab Visual Studio 2019 and install the desktop development package. I'll link this also. After that, we are going to use the provided ModStub repository to create a JVL project. You can get there using this link, and I'll also put this in the description. If you go to the repository, you'll see this Use This Template button. Click that, and you'll be taken to this screen. From here, you can create the ModStub underneath your own GitHub account. You will need to create a GitHub account if you don't have one, but after that, just enter whatever name here, and it will create the project for you. After doing that, you'll have your new repository here under your account. Um, I'm actually going to use this one to put some example mods in here, just to hopefully show some capabilities or some of my own ideas moving forward. Um, they also have a fully fleshed out example mod. If you prefer to download that to use it as an example, uh, it's pretty extensive, and it shows a lot of the capabilities of the library, so I'll put a link to that in the description, and it, it really helps me get started, and hopefully it will help uh, any of you. After generating your repository, the easiest way to get it into Visual Studio is just to open Visual Studio and click Clone a Repository. For the repository location, you can get that from your GitHub page. If you navigate back to GitHub and hit the drop down on code, it's just this link here. So click here to copy and go back to Visual Studio. Paste that in the top box and then just select a path on your file system to store the repository. Once you have those boxes filled, hit clone. You'll see that the solution with your project in it gets pulled down from GitHub and it's ready to be used. The next thing I want to talk about are the pre-build automations that are provided with this stub. This step is marked as optional in the guide, but I highly recommend enabling them. To do so, first you need to create an environment.props file inside the stub directory. Copy this code here, and then create that file and paste it inside. Replace the install directory with your game install directory. You also need to edit this do prebuild.props file. So open that and replace this false with true. When first opening the stub, you'll see a lot of errors. Just Build the project, and these should go away. 
If the errors do not go away after building the project, close the entire solution and reopen it, and then rebuild the project again. After that, they should all be gone and your references should be resolved for Valheim modding. By default, when building a mod stub project, this publish PowerShell script is executed as a post build step. Uh, if you want to change this script, you can edit it here, or you can remove that post build step if you don't want it to execute. But what it gives you is basically uh, what is listed here on this post build automation screen. Uh, it automatically installs your mod into your plugins directory and then sets it up for debugging. I'm not going to cover debugging here, but uh, it's pretty useful for ironing out your mod execution and the article linked on this page is, is a good introduction to that. So I'll, I'll put that below also. When you do your build, your mod will be called Yoden Mod Stub. So you'll wanna come in here um, and rename anything to what you want your mod to be called and uh, restructure this project however you want it before actually publishing your mod. I'm not going to talk about too much more of the guide right now as it is really well written and I think it covers a lot of the points um, pretty well through the text. But the last thing I want to hit on is this project template in Visual Studio. Uh, Whereas you selected the .NET Framework project template previously, the Yoten devs have provided a new template that gives you a, a Yoten modding base instead of just a pure .NET setup. Uh, it's very useful, but it takes a couple steps to enable it in Visual Studio, and I just wanted to demonstrate the process. So to do that, you use this link here. Grab this whole zip file. And you're going to put this into your Visual Studio template location. The easiest way to do that is to go back to Visual Studio, then search for templates. Click this one where it's the default project templates location. You should have a window pop up with variable something like this with your username provided in here. If you click this button, it will take you to that file location and you can paste the entire zip file into that spot. After opening that file, go into Visual C Sharp and paste the zip file there. After adding the template, when you go to New Project, you should have it show up in your project list. The last thing I want to mention before closing this video out is just what you're able to do currently with Yoten. And it's quite a list of things at the moment. So piece adding, item adding, um, a bunch of other things are just made extremely simple and streamlined. Uh, and, and another one of the things you get with this package is hopefully reduced conflicts with other mods. It normalizes approaches to doing certain things in the game and hopefully smooths out that process overall. Um, of course, once you get more comfortable with modding the game, you, you absolutely can do any of this stuff outside of the library. Uh, if you want to reduce dependencies or reduce your mod size, that's completely fine. You don't have to use this. Uh, it's just a good starting point and there are a lot of examples of doing some common things um, and some stuff that sort of adds to the um, overall cleanliness of mods. For example, asset mocking is extremely powerful. I'm not gonna go into that in this video, but uh, I may in a future video soon or uh, another member in the community that I've spoken with may make a short video on that concept. So. Hopefully I can cover some of these. I'll put out some example mods into my repository. Um, and then also this example mod is available here that the developers have provided. Uh, I think it does some things like um, 
adding a backpack in game and maybe a couple placeable pieces. I'll put a link to this in the description as well. So that's a basic uh, update on kind of how the modding setups changed and then what JVL can do for you and why I'm going to start using it pretty prominently in my mods moving forward. So thanks for watching and have a good one.